Hey guys, Marco here from Aviero Life CS. Welcome back to the channel. Today we will continue reviewing the non-normal checklist for flight instruments and displays. I hope you enjoy the video. We are almost ready for departure out of 30 right at, at Dubai International Airport. And today we will see some of the non-normal checklists for flight instruments and displays. And we're going to start with the altitude disagree non-normal checklist. And the altitude disagree indication indicates that the captain's and first officer's altitude indications disagree by more than 200 feet for more than five continuous seconds. So at some point in our flight, we will see the altitude disagree indication here and here. I'll have to apologize, guys. I cannot simulate all of these non-normal checklists here, but regardless, we will go through all of them to see how those non-normal checklists look. So let's go flying. We'll press Toga switch, and here we go. We have N1 Toga. We'll go flaps up. We have flaps up, no lights. 1,000 feet to level off. And we have engine bleeds on, packs auto. The lights off, engine start switches off. Auto brakes off, landing gear off. And then we'll complete the after takeoff checklist. So we keep flying and we can see we are getting the altitude disagree alert. We can now see it better, altitude disagree. And of course, we'll call for the altitude disagree non-normal checklist. The condition is the altitude disagree alert indicates the captain's and first officer's altitude indications disagree. We will have to choose one. Indicated airspeed disagree alert is shown. If that's the case, we'll have to go to the airspeed unreliable non-normal checklist. If you guys didn't watch that video, please uh, hit the link above and you can go through the whole video to see how the airspeed and reliable looks. If the indicator airspeed disagree alert is not shown, we'll go to step two, which is the case today. Verify all altimeters are set to correct barometric setting. So let's check that. If we have a closer look, we have altimeter set 1016 on the captain's side. We have 1016 on the ISFD, and we have 1016 set on the first officer side. Now we'll have to choose one. Altitude disagree alert extinguishes. If it does, we'll continue a normal operation, and that's the end of the checklist. Now, if the altitude disagree alert stays illuminated, there is a note saying airplane does not meet RVSM airspace requirements. And we'll go to step four. Step four says standby altimeter is available. Do not use the flight path vector. Maintain visual conditions if possible. Now we go to step seven. It says choose one. A reliable altitude can be determined. We'll go to step eight. A reliable altitude cannot be determined. We'll go to step nine. Now, before we continue, let's go to the FCTM. And let's see what it says about altitude unreliable. Altitude information transmitted to ATC by the airplane's transponder may be unreliable. ATC is not an independent source of barometric altitude information. In situations where altitude indications are unreliable or altimeters disagree, transponder altitude received by ATC may be unreliable and cannot be used to verify barometric altitude. Accomplish the altitude disagree non-normal checklist if the alert is shown. In the event of an unreliable altitude condition, it is important to know that GPWS, VA, MDA callouts are provided based on the captain's minimum selector. If the captain's altitude indications are not reliable, then the minimum selector should not be set on the captain's side, as the DA, MDA, or callouts are inaccurate. If only the first officer's altitude indications are reliable, then the minimum selector can be set on the first officer's side. However, 
DA, MDA, or callouts are not provided. And let's have a look to this note from the Boeing 737 MRG. And I want to thank Captain Pat Boom for allowing me to use some of his information from this uh, excellent uh, app for the Boeing 737. It says, always cross-check both indications with the standby altimeter. In the event two altimeters indicate the same altitude, most probably the third one is to be ignored. However, it remains possible that only one indicator shows the correct altitude and two others show invalid. So let's go through both options and let's say that the reliable altitude can be determined. We'll go to step eight. It says set transponder to provide reliable altitude reporting. Let's say in this case, the captain's side is a reliable one. So we'll verify that the altitude source is selected to number one. And then we'll go to step 10, which says a checklist complete except deferred items. It says review before descent. For approach, only set the battle minimums on the reliable PFD. Remove the battle minimums from the unreliable PFD. Note, if battle minimums are set only on the first officer's PFD, DA, MDA, or callouts are not provided. Establish landing configuration early. Radio altitude reference is available below 2,500 feet. Use electronic and visual glide slope indicators where available for approach and landing. And that would be the end of the checklist. Now, if we go back to step seven, and we choose that our reliable altitude cannot be determined, we'll go to step nine. Step nine says set transponder altitude reporting off. So we'll select the transponder mode selector to altitude reporting off. Checklist complete, except deferred items. We already talked about them. That would be the end of the altitude disagree, non-normal checklist. Now let's clear that malfunction. And now we will talk about AOA disagree which is the angle of attack disagree condition. The AOA disagree alert indicates the left and right angle of attack veins disagree. In that case, we will have to go to the airspeed unreliable, non normal checklist. And before we continue, let's go back to the FCTM and let's read about the erroneous angle of attack AOA indications. Damage to AOA veins can occur for several reasons, including burst strikes or impact during ramp operations. An erroneous AOA can cause one or more of the following indications. AOA disagree alert, altitude disagree alert, indicated airspeed disagree alert, field differential pressure light, if EFS which stands for elevator field shift active for 30 continuous seconds. One or more of the following flight deck effects can also occur. Airspeed low oral, auto slide operation, automatic disengagement of autopilot, inability to engage autopilot, wind shear oral and indications. One or more of the following flight deck effects can also occur on the affected side. Airspeed low PFD indications, continuous or intermittent stick shaker, erroneous flight director pitch command bar, erroneous pitch limit indicator, erroneous minimum and maximum speed bars, red and black. Okay. Now we'll see the CDS fault, non normal checklist. Remember, CDS stands for common display system, which is the one supplying information to the flight crew on this uh, six flat panels we have. The condition, the CDS fault annunciation indicates a CDS fault of course. Note, CDS fault annunciates on the ground only before the second engine start. If we get this, we cannot take off. And that's the end of the checklist. And to complete today's video, we are going to talk about display failure. We will probably get one or oh, there you can see it. We just got a display failure and uh, we can call for the display failure, non-normal checklist.
condition a display in the common display system is failed, we will have to choose one. A single display is not usable, an automatic switching has occurred, and that's exactly what happened, as you saw. Continue normal operation, that's the end of the checklist. The second option says, a single display is not usable, and automatic switching has not occurred. In that case, we'll go to step two. In that case, we'll use the main panel DU and lower DU selectors as needed. And we also talk about how this panel works in our previous video. So I will leave the link above so you can go and check it out. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit that bell so you will be notified once we upload a new video. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. That's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will complete the review for flight instruments and displays. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.